the next book of the Dasam Granth is the Gyan Prabod. The Gyan Prabod starts out with a parable about righteous actions and then talks about the different dharmas. The Buddha tells us that there are four different dharmas, Raj Dharma, Nan Dharma, Bhog Dharma, and Mok Dharma. And in this Gyan Prabho, he really only talks about Raj Dharma. So it is thought, the scholars think, that there are three other books of the Gyan Prabho that we haven't yet found, uh, because they explain these other dharmas and the technology of the dharmas. The next book is the Chobis Avtar. And in, the, in this uh, body, the Guru talks about the 23 avatars of, the, of Lord Vishnu. And so basically, whenever the earth got too heavily laden with evil, Lord Vishnu would come down and reincarnate as an, as an avatar and deal with the, with the evil. But in each one of the uh, avatar stories, he always ends up showing that that Lord, that the avatar gets lost in his own ego. He always ends up determining that he's God himself and failing in that way. Which is why, you know, 23 avatars later, we're still telling the story. The next book of the Dasam Granth is the Up Avatar, which is about the seven avatars of Lord Brahma. And it's the same thing. And so by the end of these two books, you really understand very deeply that there really is only one God and that all the other, everybody has a spark of God in them. But the minute that we accentuate that spark of God and the power comes, then comes the spiritual ego and then comes the fall. And so really these two books tell this same story very beautifully over and over and over again as is the um, as is the Hindu technology. Then the next part, the last part of the Dasambhan is under, is a collection called the Foot Kal Rachnavan. And these are all the other books, basically. The first one is the Shabbat Hazari. We, the Shabbat Hazari that we recite every day for protection is really only a small part of the Shabbat Hazari. Shabbat Hazari was actually composed in nine different rags. It's quite lengthy, it's very beautiful, and it is a complete and full body of its own. The next is the Swayas, uh, which we, we read the Tav Prashad Swaya, but there's actually 33 Swayas. And in, the, in these Swayas, again, the Guru really talks about God, the nature of God, and the different aspects of relating to Him. The next is called the Khalsa Mahima. And the Khalsa Maima is actually just four um, verses only. The rest of the Khalsa Maima is in the Sarablogran, which we'll talk about in a minute. So it's a very small, it's like a one-page section. The next section is the Shastra Nam Mala. And we know that one well, any of us that have studied Gatka, because we always do our, our das with the Shastra Nam Mala. The Askirpan Kandol Karak Tubak Tabar Artir. Sarsuro he said the Yaha Hamare fear, the sword, the arrow, the gun, these are my teachers. Yaha Hamare fear, you are my teachers. And so the Shastra Namala is more like a uh, more like a dictionary. And it, and it praises each one of the weapons. It's interesting to note that uh, in the Shastra Namala, the most praised weapon is the Tupac. And the Tupac is like a cannon, sort of like a gun. So, for me, you know, whatever. I think it's really interesting that that's the most praised weapon. And so he would go on, it's written in such a beautiful way, he'll say, he'll say, you know, you know the, the greatest thing is, you know, and he will list a, um, a personality in history, the greatest thing is this person, he did that, but greater still is the Tupac. You know, and so we go on and on like this. So this is the Shastra Nam Mahon. Then there is the Chiritriyo Pukyam, and that is actually the volume that is under the most scrutiny today. The Chiritriyo Pukyam is a collection of uh, stories about the, the ways of the world, basically. 
it has some very interesting stories about uh, the strengths of women, and it has some very interesting stories about the negative aspects of women. And it's very frank. It's written in very, it doesn't cut any corners. It's written in very frank language. Um, not all of the stories are sexual in nature, but many of them are. Um, one of the, for, I'll, let me give you an example of one that isn't. And they're taken from all different um, aspects of Indian life. One of the stories was about Shah Jahan and how much he loved uh, his wife, Noor Jahan. And they had this wonderful relationship and he really worshipped her and he adored her. And one day they were out hunting together and this uh, tiger charged at Shah Jahan and he raised his gun and pointed it and shot and the gun didn't fire and still the tiger is just about ready to pounce on him. And so Noor Jahan raises her gun and shoots the tiger dead, saving the life of Shah Jahan. And Shah Jahan then thinks about this and he thinks, if she can kill a tiger, she can kill me. And from that day on, he never again shared his life with Noor Jahan. He kept her separate and never again spent a moment alone with her. Now that's a fascinating story, talking about the nature of man's mind, the nature of woman's mind, and that's a teaching story of the gurus. We asked um, Baba Nihal Singh Ji if this really was the writing of Guru Gobind Singh because of the sexual nature of the stories. Um, you have to ask that question, and it's really in debate today. And he said that what these stories were for were to teach his young things. These young men would come to Guru Gobind Singh at a young age, knowing nothing about the world, and so it was the Guru's responsibility to teach them about all parts of life. And this is how he taught them about the ways of the world. And so, so that they wouldn't lose in the bedroom what they won on the battlefield. And that's how he said it. And we were able to ask the Sri Singh Sab as well, and he said definitely that this was part of the Guru's teaching. And it was to protect the things, that he wasn't talking about um, the Khalsa women, he was talking about, you know, the ways of the world and the pitfalls of the world.